Okay, 6.30 now, let's get started. Uh, so I posted the first, this week's assignment on uh, Blackboard. So let me know if you can't access it. So it's due before class next week, okay? But you should be able to do it if you follow along with the tutorial, which should last somewhere an hour and a half, maybe two hours, you should be able to finish the assignment by 9.30. So you might need a little bit extra time, but it shouldn't really take you too much more time than, than an hour or so to do. Okay? Okay, so uh, today we're going to get started. We're going to write our first little bit of HTML. Okay, we're going to actually start writing, start creating uh, a web page from, from the very, from the ground up, from the foundation. Okay? Uh, so maybe let's just recap some of the stuff we went over last week, some of the more important stuff. So remember, we talked about what the internet is. Okay? So remember, the internet is like, is the infrastructure. It's the hardware, the routers the cabling between the routers um, you know software is a part of that there's software on the routers and on the servers that that maintain the internet uh, but so remember the internet let's just zoom in here a little bit so remember the internet is infrastructure Okay, so that's, it's kind of like the roads, our roads, okay? And the web, right, is of the internet. It is a, a way of transmitting data across the internet, okay? So it's the, the web, think of the web as like a certain type of vehicle that travels on the roads, okay? Uh, like cars. I would say probably the web would be like the the car that the average person buys, right? That's because that most most people, the average person on the internet uses the web, right? Now you might have some some people that are have specific uses. So you might have like a truck driver, right? Those would be your IT people. They have specific utilitarian needs, right? So they use a little something different, maybe like FTP, okay? Which we're gonna use uh, eventually, okay? We also talked about. Um, the client server architecture. Okay? So remember, with any uh, interaction over the internet, one computer acts as the client while the other one acts as a server. Okay? So a client makes a request, sends out some information to the server, and then the server reads that request and then sends back something to the client. Okay, so um, we don't actually, for the stuff we're going to do in this course, we don't actually require a server, uh, except for maybe if we get into WordPress, we'll need to install a server for that. But most of this, the stuff we're going to learn in this class uh, are, is client-side technology. So that means, if I say client-side, server-side, client-side means whatever the software is, it's running on the client machine. So the machine that makes the request, okay? Server-side technology runs on the server uh, computer, okay? So some client-side technology that I've mentioned already, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, okay? When you run HTML or you run JavaScript, your computer's hardware is doing the legwork, it's doing all the work. It's doing the calculations and everything that needs to happen. Now, if you use a server-side technology like PHP, which we won't get into in this course, but if you take an advanced course, you will, then that code gets run on the server. Okay? So sometimes, you know, let's say you had um, uh, a really, you know, a really intensive algorithm that took a lot of computing power. What you might want to do is uh, is upload it to a server. Usually, servers are very powerful, um, and you know that's that's one possible architecture that your system could take, depending on, on your needs. Okay, okay. So I think that's probably a good high level overview of what we talked about uh, last week. 
and I also mentioned some of the tools that and we'll, we'll actually we'll start using them today okay oh maybe one more thing before we get going remember there's a difference between binary files and text files right so binary files are things like uh, mp3s, wave files, images, executables, um, and then text files contain only text. Oh, also, so up here is a Microsoft Word file. Which one, where should I put that? Is it a text file or is a Microsoft Word file a binary file? binary because yes it contains text but it contains a lot of metadata so information about the text what font is it in what size is it etc okay when we work with text files today we're gonna start working with text files you'll see it's only text just text that's it no font you have if you set the font you set it at a at the page level you can't set just one word to be a certain font. You have to change the font for the entire page. Okay, same. Uh, now you'll notice sometimes the text files are colored, but that information is not embedded in the file. That's, that's a property of the program you use to read the file. Okay? Okay, so any questions about these things here? So far. Okay, so far so good. Okay, well, let's, let's do it. Well, let's, let's get to it. Why? Let's, uh, no more delays. Let's create our first web page. Okay, so, you know, one of the, I'll try and teach you, you know, there's many, many things sort of secondary to web development that are important that I'm going to try and include in our talks about web development. Okay, so one of those things is file management. Okay, you have to organize your files and your directories in a um, uh, in an organized way I suppose I can't really uh, find a better word than that but so you know it's important you'll, you'll see when we start working with different file types that you organize your files into folders uh, that you label your files correctly and your uh, well I don't know if we'll get into variables but you need to uh, make sure you label your files correctly that you use folders correctly um, and that you generally just consider your file structure, okay? Because as your site gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that can become a, a, a source of confusion if you don't stay organized, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, you might notice my desktop is pretty cluttered here. So, you know, I could just, we could create the file here, but it, it might get lost in all the clutter. So I'm going to create a folder. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on my desktop, and you can do this anywhere. You can do this in your C drive. Uh, any any area in your computer. I use my desktop a lot, as you can see, um, because it's there. It's convenient, right? I think a lot of people look down. They they might see a screen like this and be like, "Oh, you're unorganized." Okay, well maybe, but you know the the files that are here are the files that I access regularly. Okay. So, uh, you know, why, let's say if I put something on the C drive, if I wanted to access it, I'd have to go to here, then go to my computer, then double click here, then click on, you know, it's like it's three clicks versus window key D, and I'm there, right? So also remember, there are many, many hot uh, shortcut keys, in, especially in Windows 7 and Windows 8, that are very, very useful. So one very useful one is window key D. That brings you to the desktop. It minimizes everything. Okay, I use that quite a lot. Okay, so we've created a folder. So let's rename the folder, right? We, we always need to name our stuff, our files, our folders. We need to name them something. Uh, and we have many characters to work with. We can use a couple of words if we wanted to, okay? So, you know, that being said, don't get out of hand, but name your folder something that you will recognize. Like, don't name it, you know, web two, five, you know, something like that. Call it. Uh, you know, call it call it this maybe. Um, you know, you could call it intro to HTML demo page, something like that. Okay, I know it's hard for you to name it. You don't really know what we're gonna do yet, but in the future, you know, spend a, uh, ha spend 20 seconds just thinking of a good name because other people may be looking at your stuff, but then also you're gonna forget. 
I look at old stuff all the time that I coded, and I have no. It's like a new person. It's like someone else did it. I have no recollection, and so I have to, you know, leave, leave little breadcrumbs for myself so I can find my way. Okay, so we've created a folder. Now we're going into the folder. Okay, so now we're going to create our first HTML file, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to right click anywhere here, and I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to go to oop, not that. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to delete that. And I want to create a new text file. Text document. Okay? So now you'll have a text document that looks like this. Now, um, on your computer, you may not see this .txt. How many of you do not see .txt? Does everyone not see it? Oh. Um, Okay, what you might have to do is, did you download um, a text editor? Yeah, I have Dreamweaver. Okay, so open up Dreamweaver and go and create a new file and then go save as and save it into the folder. I'm not really sure how Max, uh, there must be a way to do it, but I'm not sure. Okay, um, so I'm not sure, if you have your own laptop, I'm going to show you, we need to turn extensions on, okay? Because now that you're a web developer, Okay, you 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 moved into expert mode. Okay, we're gonna adjust win like Windows out of the box is made for you know just your average word processing person. Okay, but so we have to change some of the features so it's more friendly to developers. Okay, uh, so let's see if I can remember how to do this. This is the type of thing I only do once every year or so. Uh, let's see. I believe it's right click. I might have to Google this. Remember we looked over last week how to do this. Or how to Google things. Uh, no, see they. Let's see here. Okay, let's just Google it. How to turn on extensions? Windows Seven. Okay. Okay. Uh, open, okay, control panel, what the hell is this? No. Control panel, do, 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 do. Oh, so you can do, you should do this on your machine too. So go to control panel, and then we're going to go to appearances, and, we're, and personalization, and then, what does it ask, folder options here. Oh, see right here it says, uh, no wait, that's not what we want. So click on folder options, and then in view, so click on the view tab, and then where, where is it? Uh, see here it says hide extensions for known file types. Make sure that's unclicked. Okay, if it's clicked, all you'll see is the first part of the file. And we need access to the extension. And you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so make sure that that you can see the extension. I'm sorry, I'm not. Is it? Does it show the extension on the Mac or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when by default in Windows though it doesn't show it. Okay. Okay. So did anyone not was not able to do that? And so what you should have now is new text document dot txt. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're going to rename it. So see, I'm going to rename it, but I'm just going to change the extension. So Windows uses the extension to help it to know what application to use to open the file. Okay? So if I just click here with .txt, it's going to open up with Notepad. Okay? But now what I want to do, I'm going to rename it. Instead of docs.txt, I'm going to name it .html. Okay, and it says uh, file might become unusable. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we know better than Windows. So now notice, notice the icon change. So what do you think? What do you think is going to open it up now? Well, yeah, browser. Your browser. So uh, in my case, I have uh, Firefox here. Okay. So obviously, it, it's nothing. It's an empty file. Uh, so now what we want to do, we're going to rename again. So uh, I'm not sure if you noticed. So uh, there were, there's a couple ways to rename your file. So I do, I usually do, it's called a slow double click. So you go click, click, 
And see how it gave me that option now? I think it's the same on Mac. Or I can right click and go rename. Okay? So we're going to rename this to index.html. Okay? That is the um, that is the default name for the starting page of your website. So if you go to let's say I have my uh, let's say I have my web page karmabrangie.com, okay? And in my main my root folder, I have a file called index.html. The browser will automatically look at for that file first and try and call it up. So you don't have to type in the whole thing. Like I don't have to type in www.carmenbranje.com slash index.html. I don't have to do that. Okay, I could. Oh, actually, I guess, no, because I have it redirect somewhere else. Um, but so if you don't explicitly say index.html, it'll just, it'll pick that one automatically. Okay? So that's the, you, that's the first thing to know about HTML files. Index.html. And I mean, you know what, that's not even a particularly good name. Remember at the beginning about my speech about how web technology kind of sucks? This is one of those examples. This is the only reason it's called index is because of history. You know, because of how it started. And so we've just sort of stuck with it all the time, up, up uh, still to this day. Okay, so, you know, is there, is there a really good reason for it to be called index? Well, not really. I think there's probably, we could all come up with 10 better names, but this is what we have to deal with, okay? So index is our default page. So the first thing we want to do now, we're going to edit this HTML. We can't just double click on it because that'll open it up in the browser. We don't want to see it. We want to edit it. So what we have to do is we have to edit it in our text editor. So I've installed Notepad++, so I could just right click on the file and click there and it will open up. That's one way. The other way is I could open up my, I could open up text uh, Notepad first. So actually Windows 7 has a really great uh, search feature. So if you press Window key, see how it jumps to, to search right away? Oh, let's try and So I can just type Notepad and it comes up right away. I don't even have to finish it, and then I hit enter. So in that, in that sense, Windows is giving you the best of both worlds. So you get sort of a command line interface and also a GUI interface. So if you open up the application, then you can just click and drag it over, and it will open as well. Okay. So I'm actually going to use Dreamweaver. Uh, you can use Notepad. I recommend Dreamweaver be, just because uh, it's, you know, it's sort of industry standard. It has a lot of extra features uh, that I'll, that I'll make note of as we go through. That will help you. Um, if not though, you'll, you, for this tutorial, you'll be perfectly fine with even Notepad. You'll be able to, you know, just the Windows Notepad. You'll be able to get by. Um, okay, so again, uh, we can open it from the file. So I could have right clicked here, went to open with, and then pick Dreamweaver. Or I can just uh, drag it over. Just let me know if it's too cold. It's nice for me. I like the breeze, but just let me know. Okay. Is it raining out now? Okay. So um, we have loaded up our page. Okay. So for the people who are using Dreamweaver, uh, there are a couple of extra things here uh, that you don't see with Note++. Okay. So one, uh, the, su the stuff here, we're not really going to use too, too much. Uh, because this... So remember I, I showed you uh, the FTP client. So this little window here is a built-in FTP client for Dreamweaver. So you don't need FileZilla. You can just use Dreamweaver, okay? But I said we're not using any server, really. So there, we won't have a, a, a need to use this little area much. But maybe I'll probably, as we get further on in the course, I'll give you just a little tutorial about you know, working with servers and, and things like that, and, and, and we'll play with that. But for the most part, we could probably just close this side panel, minimize it. We're not going to use a lot of it. Notice at the top here, there's a couple of buttons here, okay? So you should always be on the code view, okay? This is the view for the experts, for the people who know what they're doing. And you guys are, are going to be that type of person soon, okay? There's also something called the design view. 
Okay, that is a WYSIWYG editor. What is a WYSIWYG editor? We talked about this last week. What you see is what you get. Okay, so uh, you know I'm not really even sure how to use this because I've never even used the design view. But basically, uh, geez, there must be some tool, a tool set. But basically, you can drag and drop the web elements right in here, and as you know, what you see right here is what is going to appear on the browser window. Okay. The problem with that, it's quick. You can get started really fast and get something out and going really quickly, but you're, you'll, you'll hit a limit very fast. Uh, you won't be able to do much. Okay? But if you do it the code way, it's going to take the learning curve is much, uh, it's not steep. People always use that incorrectly. It, it's it's going to take you long to learn this stuff. So the learning curve is actually not steep. What's the opposite of steep? It's un not steep. Okay. It's gonna so there's you're gonna have to invest some more time up front to learn this stuff, but you'll be able to take it all the way. Okay, all the way. Yep. Um, I've been following along. I basically yep. just did the same thing. Like oh, uh, maybe you probably opened up another file. So I you created it. Oh, probably because, um, okay, so that's, uh, that's fine, because what, so Dreamweaver has lots of tools and things that it, it tries to help you, so that is basically what it injected, that's the bare minimum of what an HTML page is. Um, so if you'll notice, even if you view that page, it won't show anything, but that's based, that's the framework of your page, and we're actually, you can delete that, if you just, just uh, press Control A, that's select all and then just delete because we're gonna I'm gonna take you through that and build that header so that you understand what's going on okay oh shoot okay. hopefully that didn't stop my recorder man this setup is so piss poor like look where they have this thing here and then how am I supposed to use my mouse and my knees are bashing up against this it's horrible okay I'm just gonna make sure I'm still recording yep Looks like it. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to. Uh, okay. Actually, before we start typing, I'm going to bring us back to uh, our good old Word document here. Okay. So HTML. Anyone care to hazard a guess what those letters stand for? Markup language. Exactly. Hypertext markup language. Okay. So this here, markup, that's key. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be marking up text, okay, with things called tags. Okay, we're going to tag, just kind of like, you know, uh, biologists, they go and tag animals in the forest to identify them. We're going to do that to text. We're going to tag them, okay? So a typical tag. So the first tag we're going to use is called the HTML tag, okay? So a tag has two parts, an opening and closing tag, okay? And each tag is represented by, these, by the triangle brackets and the type of tag inside the brackets, okay? So this right here is a tag. So that's the opening tag and our closing tag is the same thing but with a slash. Okay? And that right there is, that is what HTML is. That is all it is. Uh, we're going to look at probably, I think in this class we'll get through most of them. It may, we'll carry on probably, some, there's some advanced tags that we won't get to until maybe the third or fourth class. But that's it. That's all we're going to be doing. So what we're, what we're doing with these tags is we're describing the stuff in here. This stuff here, we are now telling it is HTML. Anything between this tag and this tag is HTML, whatever that means. Okay? And that goes for any tag, any tag. Okay, so you could have uh, your your name, okay, and in HTML, 
Uh, and actually, this, you shouldn't usually do this. You should do this using CSS. But for example, you can. There's a tag called bold, okay? And it's just a B. So if you put the B tag around your text, what do you think it's going to do to that text? It's going to make it bold, okay? Okay. So that's sort of that's the general introduction to HTML tags. So let's go back to our our file now. So uh, the first thing we have to do, so this is our, our HTML document, okay? So the first thing we want to tell it, tell our browser, is that this entire document is HTML. Okay, and do you see Dreamweaver, what it did there? It actually, it's smart enough to know that my tag, whenever you have an, a ta an open tag, you need a closing tag. So it knew. It guessed it for you. Notepad++ won't do that for you. So if I go to here, and I put this, it does it. It won't do it. I have to type it all up. Okay. So Dreamweaver tries to help you. Now sometimes, honest, sometimes that little helping can get annoying. Sometimes, because I know how to code, and so, so I lay out. I have you know, some sort of methods in my hands. Like let's say I'm laying out a structure, I just go really fast. But then it tries to lay it out for me and then I get in its way and then it, so it, you know, you can turn these things on and off and it's up to you if, if you feel they're useful or not. But uh, they're there for in Dreamweaver. Okay, so uh, let's say we save that file. Okay, so re remember whenever you change it, see that little star up there beside the file? See, it says index HTML star. That means your file is not, you've made changes and you haven't saved it, okay? Remember that because even to this day, okay, I still do this once in a while where I'm, you know, I make some change in my code and then I go look for the change in the results and it's not, it's not happening. And I get frustrated. I look back at my code. My code's fine. It's not happening. Why is it not happening? Because I didn't save my file. Okay, so always remember that when you do a little change, Control S, right? Hot hotkeys, Control S, save it, and then look up it in your in your browser. There's also in you can set up Dreamweaver uh, to automatically open up uh, a browser. I'm gonna have oh here it is right here. So you can you can uh, and I think it it should save it automatically. Let's try it. Uh, oh, so it's telling it's prompting me to save. Okay. But so let's save it, and then let's go back to our, our directory where we had our file. This is our file. So let's open it up in, uh, in whatever browser. OK. So it's blank. Nothing. So the browser knows it's an HTML document, but we haven't put anything in the document yet. So there's nothing to show. OK. Now let's, we can view the source if we right click on our, on our uh, window here and we go to view page source look at our now we can see our source okay okay so let's go back okay so now uh, after so HTML that's like your your root tag okay everything is gonna go in between these two tags okay so now we have the two other main tags that all documents must have is the head tag and can anyone guess what the other tag would be? Title. Huh? Title? Title? Yeah. Uh, that's coming. Body. Body. There you go. Right? They're, they're trying to use some sort of, I guess, metaphor to the human body, head, body. And now with HTML5, we have other specific tags like footer, uh, but uh, that's different. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. Now, does anyone notice a mistake that I've made? I made a mistake here. Yes. Yes, I, I have my tags, but I didn't close them with a slash. Oops. So it has to be inside. OK, now notice with HTML and other languages like XML, we'll talk about XML a little bit later. XML looks a great deal like this. OK, notice you have to, <coughs> you can't open your tag. Uh, you can't interleave the tags is what I'm trying to say. So for example, I could not do this. That is illegal. 
You see how I'm closing this tag before I've closed this tag? If you open, open, open a tag, you have to close, close, close in the same, in the reverse order that you opened, right? So let's do it. So see, I opened this tag and then I closed it. And now I'm free to open up another one. So now someone else mentioned another tag, title. Okay, where, where do you think title will go? Right, so what we can do is see, in, uh, see here, there's a title up here, Carmen Branja, and here, it's nothing, it's just the file name. So we can, we can change that, we can make that whatever we want, okay? So what we do is we use a special tag called the title tag. And that tag goes inside the head tag, okay? So what we're going to do is inside, we're going to create some white space, whoops. So remember, well don't remember, I'm telling you for the first time. HTML ignores white space after the first space. So if I do this, doesn't matter. Same. Okay? It's only uh, after, so if you have some text and then a space, it looks at the first space, but everything after that it ignores. If you want more space, you have to explicitly tell it in a number of, there's a number of ways to do that. Okay? Okay. So let's, uh, I don't like too much white space. Generally, I like to have a little bit of white space um, it just helps the readability. Now also notice I've tabbed my each layer that I go in, I tab in. So see this is my first layer, HTML, and then everything inside HTML I'm tabbing one tab over. Okay? That helps readability tremendously. If I come to look at your code because you want, you need, you want help, it's not working, and I see code that looks like this with no tabs. First thing I'm going to tell you to do, tab your code. Okay, I think even Dreamweaver will... Do they do it? No, I don't just want to indent it. Um, I'll have to view code. No, maybe not. I guess because with the with web code it's it's a little bit dif more difficult to format it. but some desktop languages will automatically tab for you. Uh, I don't think that exists in Dreamweaver though. Okay, so but you can tab, you can highlight and tab as as a group. So all anytime you go inside a tag, you want to tab. Okay, so now we're going to do that. So in our head, we're going to create a new tag. So the first thing we do is we tab one over, and so now we're going to create the title tag, okay? And so in the title, feel free to put anything in here you want. My first web page, okay? So now we're going to save and go back to Firefox and we're going to refresh our browser and in the tab or in, you know, basically at the top, it should say my first web page. Okay, so as a, uh, basically the rule for the head tag is anything that goes in the head tag does not appear in the, in, see this white spot here? The, anything you put in the head tag will not appear in that area. This is, this area here, that is the body. Okay, so anything you do in the head, really that the title is the only thing you, you'll do in the head where you'll see some immediate uh, text change, right? Most stuff in the head is, is administration stuff. So for example, when we start bringing in CSS code, it's a good idea to have CSS code in a separate file. And so what you put in the head tag is a link to that separate file, okay? So anything in the head doesn't get put in the main body of the page, okay? Okay, so far so good. So now, let's put some stuff in our body. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna go to the web here. We're going to look up lorem ipsum. Does anyone know what lorem ipsum is? What's lorem ipsum? No one? Okay, so this comes from uh, the days of printing. So lorem ipsum 
is basically a bunch of gobbledygook that looks like English. That's it. Okay. So sometimes when you're doing web design, uh, you know, a lot of times it's for a client or something, or maybe it's for yourself. And you're not really sure. You know, you, you know, you want a biography or something here, but you don't want to really spend time to write your biography right now. So what? What's a good idea? Instead of just putting a block of text that doesn't look very good, is you should use lorem ipsum as dummy text. Okay, just because it looks like real text, and so when you do the formatting, it'll you know it'll look a little more realistic. So uh, you can generate any number of, of uh, paragraphs, but for now, let's uh, copy this, and we're going to go back to Dreamweaver, and we're going to paste it in our body. Okay, let's save that, and let's have a look. Lorem Ipsum? Uh, just go to Google, so it's L-O-R-E-M-I-P-S-U-M. -E and then I just went to the first one here. And then, uh, then it, so you can generate as many paragraphs as you want. So the default is just five, and then generate it by clicking that button, and then here your, here's your text, you can just copy it. Yep. Yeah, you should be able to. Um, so there, are you secure? You should be able to connect to that uh, with your with your credentials, with your email credentials. Um, yep, definitely. You can access the Wi-Fi. Okay. So let's have a look at what our web page is going to look like. Ta-da! Okay. That's it. That's all we got. Just text. Pretty boring. But, uh, okay. So let's do this. To hammer home the fact that white space is ignored, let's do this. Now, how many of you are going to bet where do you think the second paragraph is going to appear? Is it going to appear like down here? Or is it going to appear right underneath. You know where it's going to appear? Right here. Okay? Because it, it, it even new lines, a new line is a special character. It's an invisible character. So you have to tell it. If you want a new line, you have to specifically tell it. It's not, if you, you can put new lines till the cows come home in your code, it's not going to reflect so everything between, so there's this space here, uh, or actually there's that space there, and then everything between here and here is ignored. Okay, so remember that, remember that. Okay, so for now we'll just have our, our two blocks of text. Okay, so does everybody have this? A web page with lorem ipsum in it. So we're going to use our first tag, our embody tag. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tab. Uh, actually, in this case, why isn't this working? That's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the paragraph tag. Okay. And that is just a P. So we're going to put P's around each one of these little blocks of text. Okay. There's a P. Now, what will happen, so I put one paragraph, I've made this into a paragraph. So what do you think, just guess, I mean, you know, I, I don't expect you to know this, but just try, you know, what, what do you think will happen? Now it's going to be separated. Because, so the P tag is what's called a, uh, a block level element, okay? So that means, it automatically comes with a new line character at the end. Okay, so imagine at the here there's an invisible character that says new line. Right after the P. Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. Okay. Um, so we can do the same thing for the other. That doesn't mean it, it's 
No. So um, let's close this. So now we have two paragraphs. I don't think this is really going to change anything. It might bump it down a little bit more. But because there's nothing under here to show it. Right? Uh, so what we could do, if we wanted to just quick and to do a tab, just quick and dirty, um, is we can, so there are special character. It, we can use the new line character. So there are special, uh, special HTML characters. Uh, for example, tab is one of them. So, what's that? Block. Oh, block quote. Um, yes. Um, okay, but hang on. Let me just find the tab here. Horizontal tab. So there we go. So if we copy that here, did I save? Uh, what did I do here? Um, oh, maybe we don't. No, that shouldn't matter. It should work. No, because it's not a tag. It's a special character. So this, uh, you know what's happening? It's putting in... Oops. Semicolon? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I'll have to get back to you on why this isn't working. But there are, so there's new, there's a, there's a number of special characters. Now, usually, you shouldn't really use them. Like, so there is a, there's a tag called uh, break. It's a self-closing tag. So if I put this here, this, that's a new, that's, it's, there's also a new line character. Let's try in two ways. Let's see if I can do this. New line. Line feed. This should be it. But this probably isn't going to work either. But let's try it. Uh, so it worked. Yeah, it's not. My special characters aren't working. I'll have to get back to you on why that's not working. But generally, you shouldn't use them. You shouldn't use break. That's It's poor form. Um, I'll, I'm going to show you how to do layout probably uh, on the, not next class, but the class after. And so um, you should do your layout in such a way that you don't need these breaks. You should use paragraphs, headings. I'll show you as, as we get further. Um, sort of the, the, the better way of doing things. Okay. So we have two paragraphs. So now we're going to try our next uh, tag, which is the heading tag. So there are six heading tags, okay? And they all just uh, are H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. H1 is the biggest, H6 is the smallest, okay? So we could uh, put a, close our heading tag here and we could say, this is my first web page. Okay? And we'll go over here and we will refresh. And there we go, nice big text. Okay. So see, I could easily change the characteristics of this text by just changing the tags. So now, going from big text, it's going to go to just a paragraph. So see how we are describing the stuff inside the tags. We're describing it by the types of tags that we put around it. So let's try heading two. Let's copy this and let's paste it above our second paragraph. And let's call it heading two and see what that looks like. There we go. So see it's slightly smaller.
Okay. And then, you know, let's just try, let's try it just for H3. Oops. Let's see what H3, 4, and 5 look okay. like. It's kind of like a, an eye chart, maybe. <laughs> How far can you go down? OK. OK. So now, I, with, now we're not going to get into CSS today. I think we're going to start probably next week. So don't expect this is as exciting as this is going to get as far as visual, you know, visuals. OK? All we can do with HTML. Um, well, mostly what we do, let me rephrase that. Mostly what we do with HTML is describe relationships between entities. That's it. Okay? So, for example, um, is heading one above or below heading two? Is heading one above or below heading two? It's not a trick question. <laughs> is heading one above or below heading two? It's above. OK, good. Now, let's do this. Uh, now, I could do this. OK, and let's get rid of this. Now, can I say uh, that heading one is above the first paragraph? Yes. No. no, I can't. Well, what is it? How do I describe the relationship of the positioning between these two elements? It's inside. OK? So see how we're, just, we're describing the relationships between these elements. So we're saying, this guy is above this one. And this is inside this one. And this one is beside this one. Okay? We're just basically, it's rough, rough layout. Okay? What we're going to do next week with CSS is then start giving it some actual form. So, okay, yes, this paragraph is above this paragraph. But what if I want this paragraph to be only 50% of the page or something in terms of width? Okay? Uh, so for that, I would need to use CSS to do that, okay? But that, it wouldn't change the relationship. H1 would always be inside P, okay? H2 is still below H1. See, let's see. Let's look to see what that looks like, okay? So see how H1 comes with, uh, comes with space above and below automatically. So see how it's, there's an automatic line break here. So there's a space, and then another line break, and more space. Okay. If I took away these headings, then all that goes away. So where is it? this is here, right? So all that extra stuff goes away. OK? OK, so we've looked at. The HTML tag, the head tag, the title tag, the P tag, and the H tag. Okay, pretty boring stuff so far. All we can do right now is basically lay out a static web page uh, that does really nothing except display some, some text. Okay, so let's see, what should we do next? Uh, let's do links. Okay, because without links, I mean, it's called. Uh, you know, this, I mean, that's what the web is about, links, OK? So again, um, for some crazy reason, the link tag is not called link, <laughs> as you may, as you might assume it might be called. It's actually called the anchor tag.
this isn't screwing up my video. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put in our first link. Okay, so uh, we'll just start with the, the bare bones. So that's our anchor tag, the bare bones of our anchor tag. Oh. Oh, plugged it into the wrong one. Uh, so, this is going to be our first link, okay? So let's try it. Let's see if it... Now, I'm actually missing something from there, okay? So, what piece of information will I need for this link? Yeah, what's it linking to, okay? So, this is going to be your first introduction to a link attribute, okay? So links, think of links as, or think of tags. Sorry, did I say link attribute? I meant tag attribute, okay? So think of tags as like a person. People have attributes, right? They have a height, they have a hair color, they have an eye color, right? They have all these attributes. So you could say, this is a person, Right, you could use the person tag. And then you'd say, his hair color is blonde. That's an attribute, okay? So what we need to do is we need to give this anchor tag an, att an attribute. And the, the place we put attributes is in the opening tag, okay? Now look what Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver is so nice that it has provided a list of all the possible attributes that I can use for the A tag. Uh, now, I honestly have never used, oh, actually most of these, some, yeah, uh, about half of these I've used, okay? But the most important one is this guy right here, href, okay? So now, now this is an attribute of A. We're going to have many different A's, and some are going to link to some pages, some are going to link to other pages. So we have the value of this attribute is going to equal what's ever between these two quotes. Okay, and what we can do is we can put a URL here. Save it. Okay, now let's head back. Or I'll leave that up for a second so you guys can... Uh, Okay, so let's save and go back to Firefox and refresh. And here we go. Here's some action. All right. Okay, we now have a still lame but not totally lame web page. Okay. Okay, so notice that the text between the A tags uh, is the text of the link. Okay, so if I change this to Google, then it'll say Google. Okay. Now, so I could, let's say if I copy this, okay, so if I change this to CarmenBranje.com, is that going to take me to CarmenBranje.com? No, this is, this is just the label. I could, I could call this Bob. It doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. Okay, what matters is this here. You have to put in the URL where you want to go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So notice that a link tag. Uh, is a line level element. So that means it doesn't come with a line break automatically at the end. So did I save it? Yes. So if I go here. So see how I injected my link in the, in the paragraph? 
but it didn't automatically create a new line. Remember when I injected the header in my paragraph? It, it injected a line, okay? So some elements have that uh, new line automatically. So those, that's, those are, that's P, the P tag, the H tag, um, the div tag, which is a very, very, very important tag that we won't get into today. We'll get into two or three classes from now when we do layout, okay? Okay, so does everybody um, understand what we've been doing so far? So we have a link. We can create a link. Okay. Um, let's, and everyone's comfortable with this, the concept of an attribute in a link. Okay, because, you know, these things build, right? If you don't, if you don't get it at the ground floor, it's, you, you won't be able to keep going. Okay? So we have to make sure that everyone's on board. Okay, the next thing, let's add some, some color to our page. Let's put in an image. Okay? So, an image tag uh, is actually sort of a funny tag. It's a self-closing tag. Okay? Because, I mean, think about it. Does, would it make sense to do this? Image, it won't even let me. You know, some text and then a closing image tag. Like what? What would that look like? Would the text be on the photo or something? I don't know. So it, it doesn't make sense. So the image is a self-closing tag. Okay. So notice how it sort of closes in on itself here. Okay. So if I if I just refresh now, what's going to appear? Nothing. Why nothing? Yeah. What what? So what information does the image tag need? What is it? the file name? The name of your image. Okay. So let's first let's get an image. Let's go to uh, Google Images. Okay. And uh, let's get something nice. Sunset. Go to images. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. I just want to click one. Okay. View image. Okay. So I have the image now. So what I can do is right click and click save as. And where am I going to save it to? I'm going to save it to my folder. Right here. Okay. Now see it has this weird file name, this long file name. I'm just going to name it something else a little easier for me to remember and to type. I'm just going to call it sunset. Okay? And you can download any image you want. Okay? So now you should have, oops, you should have two files in your web directory now. You should have index.html and you should also have an image dot probably dot jpeg try and download a jpeg if you can okay so now what we have to do is uh, we have to give the image the file name okay and so again dreamweaver is so if I go with no space and I make a space dreamweaver gives me this nice handy list of all the things I can do um, so it's actually called the uh, attribute for the image file name is src, which is source. Okay, and then in our in the brackets we're going to type the name of our image file, and we're going to save that. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, pretty. Okay. So does everyone have an image? Now, 
Let's quickly go over some of the typical reasons why your image is not showing. Okay? So, reason number one. Your image does not exist. Okay? If you do that, you're going to get that. Okay? Reason number two. Your image exists. Uh, but your either the file name or the file name you've typed in your HTML file is incorrect. They don't match. You're going to get the same thing. Okay? So that's the first thing. If your images don't appear, number one, check that they exist and that they are in the same that they that they are located where you think they are, and that the file name and the file name you have in your HTML file is identical. Not the same, identical. It's case sensitive. Okay? Case sensitive. Uh, always, so generally the rule of thumb for HTML and web programming in general is lowercase, always. For the most part. Yeah. Okay? Um, so again, if you ask me, oh, my image is not showing, I'm going to say, is it there? And is the file name correct? Okay. Now that being said, also, what if I? Okay, I have my folder here. Okay. What if I took this file here, I cut it, and I put it on my desktop? Oh, I have another file there already called Sunset. We'll replace it. So I've moved it onto my desktop. What's going to happen now? when I view my web page. Is the image going to show or is it not going to show? It's not going to show? Okay, why didn't it show? Uh, well, you started saying the first answer, then you switched. It's not quite that one. It's because, so, the index file, where's my folder on? The index file here, when I, when I reference a file directly, it means files immediate in the same folder as that file. Okay? What if I did this? Is it going to work now? If I go back here and I refresh, it's still not going to show. Why not? has to be in the same folder. So if I want to leave it in that folder, what might I do here so that the image appears? Yes. So you have to include the folder as well. There we go. Okay. So generally, it's considered best practice to keep your images in their own folder. Okay? That's why I sort of went through this whole rigmarole. Okay? But if you put them in folders, you have to make sure you include the, uh, the folder name and your file name as well. Okay. Okay, so everybody has an image, good. Okay, let me just take a look at the assignment. So I make sure that I cover everything for you guys that you need. So everyone can see the assignment in um, Blackboard. Okay, title, headings, paragraph, image. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let's look at this now. Um, 
let's say, okay, let me go to Google actually. Let me go back. We're going to spend a little bit more time on images. I don't want to I don't want to leave here yet. So let's go back to Google. <laughs> and we're going to go to images and I'm going to explicitly search. Let's look for more sunsets, but I want to search for can we search for big files only? Search tools. Size. Let's look for only large files. OK, so these are really, really big photos. So this one is three, almost 3,000 by 2,000 pixels. OK, so let's view the image. OK, big, that's a, it's a big image. So if we zoom, reset to default. Uh, so it's too big even to fit on my screen. So let's save it. I'm going to save it as images, and we'll call this. Oops. We'll call this sunset two. Okay. So let's go back here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy this. I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to just put two here. Oops. So now I have two image links. So in our folder, in my folder, I should have index and then in images I should have sunset and sunset 2. Okay. So, let's look at the image here. Let's refresh. Okay. So notice, well, look how big it is. It's big, eh? Okay. Now, here's one thing we can do. We can do this. I could say so I'm going to set another I'm going to set an an additional attribute so you, it's, you can do multiple attributes, it's not just one. So I'm going to set the attribute of this image. Uh, I'm going to set the width okay, to be 200 pixels. Okay, I'm going to save that. Now let's have a look. Okay, so my image is smaller now. Let's say, let's say that's the size that I wanted. Okay, Does anyone think that's a good way to do that? No? You don't think? Why, why don't you think that's a good way to do that? Why don't you think? Okay, why? Why? Okay, that's a that's like that's possible. Yeah, that's a, that's that's yep. Yeah. Um, yes. So yes. So when we do it this way, with either H, so actually you shouldn't do this period because you should do this in CSS, but that's different. That's a different issue. You shouldn't shrink the image either with CSS or with HTML because it doesn't actually change the size of the file. And now remember, we have distributed systems now. We're transmitting data across networks. Bandwidth is cheap, almost free, but it, it's, you, know, you still have to consider it. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be serving out. Like let's say you know, I do some, some photography as a hobby, and I have you know, a really nice camera. It takes 20 megapixel pictures. You wouldn't want to be hosting a 20 megapixel picture that's 10 megs on your website. That's ridiculous. Because no one, I mean, first of all, a 10 meg, 20 meg pic, that's, it's huge. You saw, even that, that one was 3,000 pixels. My monitor is only 1,900, and this is a really big monitor. So why are you, you're sending all this data across the internet for no reason? Okay? So let's quickly do our first little introduction to Photoshop. So uh, it was suggested that instead of doing this and just and, and shrinking the display of the image but not the image itself, what we should do is edit the image and shrink the image, resize the image in, let's say, Photoshop. So let's open it up. We can right click and, oh, it's not there. That's weird. <clears throat> or we can just go here and type photo and shop. There we go. <clears throat> 
Uh, so another thing is usually, I, I don't usually like this view. Uh, my favorite view for Windows Explorer is the details view, okay, for a number of reasons. So number, uh, so right off the bat, you can see you can see a ton of information. This is important. This is the size, okay. Um, so let's just recap file sizes very very quickly. What's the absolute smallest unit of digital information that I can store? And what's it called? A what? A byte smaller than that. What's okay? How about this? Not even. Don't even think about computers. What is the smallest amount of information you can store? No. No. Uh, well, that's no information. But I mean the smallest amount of some information. What's the smallest amount? Yeah, true or false, right? So in computing, that's called a bit, okay? The, the, the values of a bit are either zero or one, okay? Now you said byte, a byte, how many bits in a byte? Eight bits in a byte, okay? So with an eight, with one byte, um, you can store up to up to 255 different combinations, right? Because you have eight, zero, or one. So you could have zero, 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 zero. You could have one, zero, 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 one, right? You could have, there's 255 combinations, okay? That's a byte. What is a kilobyte? Thousand. The kilogram, kilometer, a thousand. So a kilobyte is a thousand bytes, okay? What's a megabyte? What's a megabyte? A million. Million. Think of a megaton, right? What's a megaton? That's uh, when you say it was a uh, hundred megatons of dynamite. That's like a million, million. Uh, no, what is it? Is it a million tons of dynamite? I think so. Yeah, because you know when they measured nuclear bombs, they measured in megatons. Okay. Anyway, sidetrack. What is a gigabyte? A billion. What's a terabyte? A trillion. Okay. And we can go further. We can go petabyte, zettabyte. So, what? So what kinds what kinds of information can we store with one byte? What what kind? What could we store? I already said something. You could store the numbers between 0 and 254, right? You could store you could encode letters. You could have characters, right? So with one byte, you can basically store one number essentially. Yeah, you know, not exactly. You could do more really, but Usually that's it, one. What types of things can we store with a kilobyte of information? What types of files, what types of data? Images, text files. Uh, yeah, so this image here, our first sunset, how big is that file? Can you tell me from looking here? 54 kilobytes, okay. Is that, is that big? No, that's pretty small. That's pretty small. Uh, what kind of what kinds of information can I store in a megabyte? With a megabyte of information, what sorts of data could I store? Yeah, audio. Maybe a little tiny bit of video. Maybe a really big photo with lots of pixels. Okay. What what about in a gigabyte? What can I store it with a gigabyte? Yeah, like a DVD video. How many gigabytes are on a DVD disc? How many? 4.5 gigabytes. How many on a Blu-ray disc? 25 gigs. Okay. How much? How how big of a hard drive can you buy for a hundred dollars now? Do you know? Yeah, it's up to two now. You can get a three terabyte drive. That's three trillion bytes. They put three trillion switches in a box this big. 
That is incredible. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the reason I wanted to take you through that is so, you know, basically with the internet, we want to, for the most part, deal with kilobytes. Okay? If, you know, if we're dealing with a megabyte, there has to be a really good reason why. Okay, so, you know, you, you simply cannot compress audio. You know, if you have a minute of audio, you can compress it down to about a meg any further and it, it, will, it will degrade. You'll hear de degradations in quality, okay? So if you have an image that's, look, so how many, how, how big is the second image? How big is that? 862 kilobytes. So is that close to a megabyte? Yeah, it would be, if it was a thousand uh, about, it would be about a, a megabyte, okay? So this image, special, I mean, imagine, this is, image is going to be served up from your server thousand, millions of times a day, maybe. So, okay, yeah, one transfer might not make a difference, but if you shrink this, photo, this file down, you could save terabytes of, of bandwidth, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to open it up in Photoshop. And we're going to go to um, image size. And so we can reduce it by pixels. I like percentage. And then I just lock the, hor the height and width. So let's make it uh, like 20%. Okay. So now I'm going to save this image, save as. I'm going to save it as sunset 3. So now let's look at the file sizes. Look at that. We made it quite a bit smaller now. Okay, so now if I go back here and re so let me get rid of my size. Let's go back here and refresh. Oops. Maybe I didn't sh shrink it enough. Oh, no, because I called it Sunset three. Okay, sorry. Let's so I went to images. I took my original big file and I dragged it over into Photoshop. So I opened it up. And then I went to image and I went to image size and I just I made it smaller. So I picked percentage and I made it uh, let's make it twenty percent. And then I clicked OK. And then I saved as, and we'll save this one as 4. Okay. So now if I go back, I, uh, I can reference either 3 or 4. And those are my small files. So let's refresh. There we go. Okay. So you should always um, Resize your images in Photoshop. Actually resize them. Change the size of the file rather than just changing the display size in with your HTML code. Okay, for the number of reasons that we went through. Okay. Yep. They will lose resolution. Absolutely. So, for example, with this one, um, as you zoom, so for example, as you zoom in, you're going to get pixel. It's going to be pixelated much sooner because by shrinking it, actually shrinking it, you're throwing away pixels, right? So you have, let's say, you have an area of four pixels, and they're all similar. So they just took the average of one of them and replaced that with one big pixel, right? So that information is now lost, but you know, really, when do you really need, like, this image looks pretty good, right? Like, it looks fine, and, but it's, sh it's shrunk. Now, if you tried to print this image, if you tried to blow it up on an 8x10, yeah, it's going to look crap. It's going to look pixelated. But that's, this isn't print. This is the web. It's a different medium. And so we don't need high, high, high resolution, right? Um... So you may, you know, a site like Flickr, for example, is a photo site, and they, like, this, the, the photos you look at, they're compressed, but you can then, you can access the original if you want to download it and then print it, right? So you can, you can do, there's many, many solutions, right? But you have to remember 
that we're dealing with bandwidth now that we're transmitting. Okay. Okay. Um, so everyone's clear about the difference between adjusting the image size with code and adjusting the image size in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever. Okay. When you said that you should deal in kilobytes, not megabytes, is that yeah. the total of the whole thing? No, no. That's just a general rule of thumb. I mean, you know, Netflix, obviously, you know, they don't follow that rule. <laughs> but generally, you know, if you're just, you know, let's say here, my website or whatever here, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't want any of the smaller images here to be much more than a few hundred kilobytes. Like this thing here, right? Let's see. How big is this? Let's see if I follow my own advice. Uh, 105. So you know, so if it was two megs, I would I would say you know the site would probably work, and you know, if anyone here the, the internet's fast, it would probably you wouldn't even notice. But you know, what if someone's accessing on their phone or on a dial-up or 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 there's many many possibilities, right? Um, and so if it was two megs, I would shrink it. And if it was anywhere within, you know, 100, 200, 300, I would say, oh, that, that's, that's fine, you know. Um, now, if you have a really, like if you're Facebook or something, and you have billions of hits a day, you know, adjusting one thing by one byte, imagine all the bandwidth you're saving, right? So, again, it's different depending on, general rule of thumb, you want to deal in kilobytes, but sometimes, you know, for example, what do I, I have something here. Uh, one of my blog posts here. Or even see a lot of the stuff like this video. See, normally a video is big. So I don't host the video on my server. I host the video on YouTube. Then they, like Google, can then, they can deal with their bandwidth. And I don't have to deal with that. Even though, you know, again, bandwidth is super cheap. Even for, I, for my server, I have unlimited bandwidth and unlimited storage space for $60 a year. So it's cheap, but it's not infinite. So we just have we have to remember that. Okay, okay. Uh, let me look back here. Where's the assignment? I want to make sure that. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to look at a new tag. We're going to look at I think two or three more tags, and then we're going to end, and you can do your assignment. Okay. So. Uh, we're going to look at lists, ordered and unordered lists, okay? So a list is, you know, in Word, like we can go here in Word, and I could say, you know, one, two, three, and then do this, and make it a list, right? Or we could make it a number like this. So we, we can do that in HTML. So we use the uh, either ordered list object, uh, or unordered. Okay. And then uh, let's see. inside, geez, if, is it uh, item? No, it's not item. What is it? Li. Uh, is it li? Li, yeah, that's it. List item, sorry, that's it. Okay, uh, that's where Dreamweaver comes in handy. So now this, so now you're going to see. This is our first example of, well, not very first, but kind of is a tag inside a tag. Okay, so this here, everything between the ol ol, that that is our whole list, and then each thing, each li is an item. So this is item one. And then we could have item two and item. See, see how that the help is kind of hurting me a little bit there. See, it was trying to guess, but it guessed wrong. See, when I go here and I go, or yeah, see, it's closing my ol tag, but I don't want to do that. So li, let's do one more item. Okay, so let's have a look-see. 
Here we go. Okay. Ordered list. Oops. And let's do unordered. So we can just actually copy this stuff, the guts, and stick it in here. Oh, that's it should be U L. No, wait. Unordered. Yeah. U L. There we go. U L. Okay. And let's have a look see again. There we go. So one is just numbers, one is bullet points. Oh, stupid cable, eh? Sorry, your screen is sort of aqua colored. OK. So notice we have sort of two parts to this tag. OK. We have, so we have the outer tag that describes the whole element. And then we have inside, we have a bunch of sub-elements that are part of a part of the larger element. Yeah? I'm not getting the numbers in front of item 1. OK, let's see. understand this concept of a tag inside a tag okay because now we're going to we're going to do we're going to look at the table tag okay that's probably one of the more complex of the html tags okay and the table tag definitely uses this same paradigm okay so a little uh, a little backstory to tables so back in the day people used to do layout using tables okay that is bad don't do that okay uh, it you'll be become so extremely frustrated that you'll probably smash your computer into little bits uh, and if that's not reason enough for you I don't know it just it's 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 bad don't do it I'm gonna show you the better way to do it in two or three probably not next class class after okay um, okay, so the first thing we do is we, if we want a table, so what do we use tables for then? We don't use it for layout. We use it if we want tabular data, data that's in tables, right? So if you have an Excel chart or something you want to put in your web page, you use a table, okay? So tables, you use tables only for displaying data, tab data. So, we start off with the table tag. And of course, we close it. Okay, but if we just looked at that, it would, it would look like nothing. Okay? So what we need to do now, and I'm going to forget which one comes first, but we'll just try it. So now what we need to do is specify all the rows and the columns in the rows. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is specify the rows. Okay, the way we do that, so for rows, it uses the TR tag, and for columns, uh, TD, for some reason. Table data, but why, why not TC? TR for table row, but TD for table column? But it... Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. To me, it would be more consistent TRTC, but anyways. Okay, uh, so we start with our rows, okay, and we close our row, okay? And now inside, let's put a column, okay? So this should just be one, uh, or won't do anything because I don't have it. I'm going to put something in my table. Okay. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to turn on, I'm going to use an attribute 
of the, of the main table tag. I'm going to turn on the border of my tag, and I'm going to make it 1, size 1. Because when you turn on the border, then you can see exactly what your little table is doing down there. Okay? So I'm actually going to, let's paste this up here so you guys don't have to look down. Let's paste it up here. We'll put it at the top of the page. Now when we go here, here's our table. Okay? So let's add, if we want to add another row, okay, we could copy this and add it right underneath. So you can't have a, a row without a column. Right? If you want a cell, you need one row and one column. Okay, does that make sense? So now we're going to have two rows with one column. Okay? So if we go back here, now we have two rows, one column. Okay? Now if I want to add in another column, it gets a little more tricky. So now I have to add it into each row. I need to add a new column. So I might say here, goodbye. <clears throat> and same thing, I'm going to copy this. So notice here, so we have our table, <clears throat> OK? And then we have our first row. And inside that first row, we have a column and then another column, <clears throat> OK? There we go. Hello, goodbye. So what would I do? Let's say I want to make, uh, I want to put another row. What would I, what would I have to do to this code to do that? Um, same thing. Same thing. So what, what exactly? Tr then td. So like this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Now, what if I want to add a new column? What do I do now? Another TD where? Every row. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now, we can turn off the border if we wanted to. Usually, I do. Okay, let's have a look back at your assignment here. Uh, okay, I think we've covered everything. Okay. Um, any questions about what we've done so far? In the table? How do you think? Let's see. So let's say I want to put this image. So I'm going to cut it. Now where, so let's say I want to put it where this goodbye is. I want to put it there. So where, yeah, let's look here. So where should I put it? Which one? So, let, so let's look back. I want to replace this one. The last one. Which one? So you the image at the last one. The last one? This one? So where? Where do I put it? Here? No. Here? Here? Here or? No? Okay. Where? In here? Yeah. So replace goodbye. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. There we go. So remember, all this stuff, you know, all the tags sort of work the same, in a sense, in that, so, 
so here's one thing that we're gonna when we look at um, CSS next week this will become all the more relevant everything in HTML is a box everything a P is a box a link is a box a table is a box an image is a box everything is a box okay um, and we're gonna look at when basically the way we do layout is we manipulate these boxes using CSS right so every element has these four things so they, every element has a margin a border a padding and a content okay everything so your paragraph has a border you can put a border around it your link tag you can put a border around it your h1 tag you could put a margin and you could have a padding and you can have a border everything you can do that with everything okay so think of you know so pasting text into your table or pasting an image tag or a link tag or any tag it's the same thing essentially okay um, okay I think I'm gonna leave you there I was thinking about maybe introducing forms but forms don't really make any sense without knowing about JavaScript as well so I'm gonna save forms we're gonna come back to forms when we look at JavaScript later on okay so let's just do a quick recap because you're gonna need to do this for your assignment okay so uh, what did we look at today so we created our first HTML file so how did we do that we created a, a text file uh, we had we had to turn on extensions so we could see these file extensions because now we're going to be dealing with .html, .js, .jpg, .css, .php, all these dots, and we need to see them and be able to change them. So we did that. We created a new HTML file, which is a text file. We opened it up. We created our first, the outermost tag, the root tag, is our HTML tag that encompasses everything, and then inside we had our head tag <clears throat> and remember anything that goes in the head tag does not appear on the web page it's only admin stuff okay then we have your body tag and everything in the body tag appears on the web page okay and we looked at a couple of tags here we looked at uh, we looked at the paragraph tag that was number one we looked at the heading tags there are six of them okay we looked at the anchor tag better known as the link tag we looked at the image tag we looked at how to download an image the differences between resizing an image using HTML and resizing an image in Photoshop we looked at ordered lists unordered lists and then we left off on tables okay okay so, the assignment this week, let's just quickly go through it. Um, okay. So, you're going to create a text file called index.html. That's what you're going to submit. Uh, each one, uh, so, oh, I didn't show you one thing. I need to show you. So, in any development, it's always a good idea to use things that are called comments. Okay, comments are little bits of text that you can put in your document that are ignored by the computer. Okay, so the way we do comments in HTML is we do um, we do ang uh, triangle bracket exclamation hyphen hyphen, and then we close it with hyphen hyphen exclamation. Uh, or no wait, no, just shoot. There we go. Okay, so everything between here is totally ignored. Okay, it's there only for you. Okay, so what you might do is you might say, this is where the table data is displayed. And then down here you might say, this is where the first paragraph is. Okay, now why might, why might you do that? other people might be working on your files eventually and like I said you're gonna forget what you do so you need to leave little reminders for yourself 
Okay? So part of the assignment is to, for every section, everything that you do, you need to uh, include a HTML comment. Okay? So um, basically all these things are worth one. Uh, you want a head and body tag. You want to give a title to your, to your web page. Uh, you want to use three headings with three heading types. Uh, you want four paragraphs, each containing a very, very short story like, I went to the store today. Um, or you could use lorem ipsum if you want. Uh, use your, your page should have three images, preferably different ones. And the images in your page are not distorted and are appropriately sized. Okay. Uh, give your page four links. All links must work. No broken links. Any broken links, you get zero for that. Give your page an ordered list with five items. And give your page a table with four rows and five columns. There should be something, text or an image, in every cell. OK? So pretty straightforward. Uh, I think this is a pretty easy assignment, but they're going to get more and more difficult. So make sure you, you stay on top of these things. right? Don't, you know, if you do this one in 10 minutes, don't necessarily assume the next one is going to be the same thing. Okay, because each layer we add, remember at the beginning of all the layers I was telling you, right? All those layers, each layer adds like an order of magnitude of complexity on this stuff. Okay, so it may seem really simple now, but you need to understand this stuff perfectly because later you're going to need to use these things in conjunction with other more complex concepts. Okay, yes? Uh, you know, I don't know actually. You should be able to just do it. Let's look. Can do you have it up there? Because I don't have. I just have my view. I think I can. There's a way to do. Uh, but you should be. There's no Dropbox. It didn't create a Dropbox. Can you just click on that? Sign. Click on it. And it, but I won't. But because I have the instructor view. Oh, click here. So here. But oh, so. Oh, there, oh, no, that's for me to submit the, oh, that's the same thing? Okay, so just through the assignment, submit it through there. Um, and so it's due before next class, and I'm going to chop 10% a day that it's late. Okay, so I'm giving you a week, it should only take you an hour to do. Okay, so, uh, you know, try and finish it before you, you leave today, and then you're, you're good for the week, right? Yeah. That's a good point. I forgot that to be multiple files. Yes. So uh, let me show you how to do that. So I recommend getting a tool called WinRAR. It's a shareware program. Um, and the reason I recommend it is many of the things you might download from the internet are compressed in RAR format. Um, and RAR does zip as well. I, I don't know. I've just always used WinRAR out of habit. So you can download that, install it, and then what you do, so once you're done, uh, so either highlight all your, your files, everything including your folders, right click, go to add to archive or add, it. it'll try and pick a file for you automatically, and then it will compress it, and then that's the file you submit. Okay? And then it'll just be easy for me because then I can just download that, look at your file, and give you your marks. Okay, so any questions about anything that we talked about today? Or the assignment? Okay. So I will be here till 9.20. I'm just going to go take a, a bio break and I'll be back, but I'll be here till 9.20. So, you know, I recommend you should be able to finish it between before 9.20. So. I'll be here, you know, it's, it's so much easier to say, oh, I'm having a problem, and then I say, oh, that's your problem, then you fix it, rather than you email me, it might take me a day or so to get back, and then you forget what you were refer, you know, so I recommend just try and finish it, and then, um, yeah, I'll be here until 9.20 to help you if you have any issues. Okay? Okay. Question? Oh. Uh, oh, okay. So, 
<laughs> yeah, go back, go back. Because there, yeah, sometimes. Uh, Wait, I checked in the dog house. Oh, same before. thing? Yeah, the floor. And yeah, yeah. Get rid of it. See the thing? So, how do I get rid of it? Okay. Uh, get rid of what? The, the virus. Because I keep moving all and then it's still coming back. Oh, you actually have a virus? Yeah, because of this website. Ew. Uh, but you in, did you install something you downloaded from the website? Yes, like I tried downloading files as well. Mm. Like I tried downloading. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Download from. Oh, let's see. Now I don't have to do that. Well, the AVG should be able to remove, remove yeah, everything. Yeah, but it still keeps on coming back. Yeah. Um, so I don't like, have any of the um, programs that you want to download because it keeps getting viruses. Okay. Well, that I can I can try and take a look, but I can't really help you too much with that. So, uh, it so when you removed all, it didn't. Oh, see, it's yeah, but working. it still keeps coming back. Coming back. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes um, I would. Do you have uh, Microsoft's? Because uh, sometimes you have to run one or two virus scanners get rid of a virus because some of them don't deal with you know there are tons and tons of viruses around right um, so what I would do no but this so don't use this this site so I'm surprised that even okay oh the other thing okay uh, I don't recommend using Explorer. So let's get Chrome first. Because, um, so did you, off this, you downloaded FileZilla mm -hmm. and installed it and then you had viruses? And it didn't install. It didn't install. Okay. Um, like, it's still coming back. Yeah. And because what you need, I mean, these, brow these yeah, viruses I'll are. Put it down. Uh, okay. Because so one of the problems is Bing is also horrible. So Bing, Google, okay. But is that that's the first link that came up? Because yeah. SourceForge should be the first link. You should download from SourceForge. But even SourceForge tries to install some uh, uh, files. Uh, Uh, is that where you download yeah. it from? Mm. Uh, this is where you download no, from? Other website. The SourceForge one. Yeah. Because SourceForge should be okay. This one or because? No, the one that we actually have. This one. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I can't really, you know, don't use this site. Again, but so I would get from this is the actual like the page of the of the site. Um, so the only thing I can recommend is getting a couple of virus scanners and and run the and you need one you need a scanner that can reboot your machine and scan it without loading Windows because what the virus like virus writers are pretty intelligent so they try and so if it, they'll put a little uh, a startup routine in Windows. So even if you delete it, then when Windows starts up again, it just reinstalls it. Mm -hmm. So um, I would start with AVG. It should really be able to go. It should be able to. Uh, it, it? Uh, okay, here we go. Protect me. AVG. The other thing we can do is.
not usually. Hang on, I know this is going to seem kind of funny advice because you do have a virus now. But I usually don't have a virus scanner installed on my computer because they take up so much resources that they'll slow your computer down a lot. So usually, uh, usually I, I don't have one installed until I think there's something wrong. Like if I've downloaded something funny lately and then you know there's some behavior, then I'll install it, run it, try and delete everything, and uh, and then just remove the, the virus scanner. So I would this malware one is probably one of the better ones. Run this one in conjunction with that. You may have to. Sometimes there's some manual things you have to do for that specific virus. I'm not sure how how uh, sticky that virus is. How easy it is to get rid of it, but uh, yeah, you just have to, you're kind of learning a hard lesson, and that you have to, you kind of have to use your own judgment, right, just because the link comes up in Google, uh, and I know that one will seem pretty reasonable, but, and the other thing is you have to, even like SourceForge, you know the installation wizards, even SourceForge now, they used to be legitimate, but they try and sneak in other software, so if you just like click, 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 next, 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 then you might have accidentally uh, accepted right, an installation. Uh, so just whenever you're installing something that like you're downloading from the web, make sure you, you take your time and read everything. So, uh, so I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Usually these things are just malware. They just like try and take your browser to some shopping site or something. Like that. Um, so run those scans and then so yeah, you mean the this malware? Yeah, program? yeah. It's, it's running a scan. Um, so, but so download. You don't really need. You don't need FileZilla for now, but you'll need No Plus Plus. Did you download No Plus Plus? No. Okay. <laughs> Were you just uh, you non trusting of the internet? Yeah. I don't know. Generally, uh, generally you can tell by the look and feel of the website. I mean, there's no really way beyond that. I mean, what is that file? What did you get? What file is that? And this is the one. Mm -hmm. See that one? That one was an ad. The top ones are always an ad. And usually, the ones that are ads are not very good. You can see SourceForge is good, is a good, and then look for these stars too. But then like I said, even if you download from SourceForge, it's gonna ask you two times, do you wanna install this toolbar, do you wanna install this other toolbar? You gotta say no. Uh, but I would just, instead of just download FileZilla off the, off here. And this definitely works. Actually, it's just downloading from SourceForge. Okay, so let me know how that scan goes. Uh, oh, see a detective. Uh, and then you'll probably, it'll, hopefully it'll schedule a scan at the beginning of the boot so that it will. So is this, is this it's scanning. And then what will happen? Well, it'll, I don't know. It or no? Possibly, I don't know. So the other, the only, the only absolute way to fully guarantee that you've removed a virus is to do a fresh install of Windows. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, you need, you have Windows disk? No? I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, so when you, when you bought this laptop, it came with yeah. Windows. Yeah. So, um, you could, yeah. uh, because as long do you have the license key? What's going on? Yes, you do. See, that's uh, for Windows 7. Uh, home. So even if you got a copy and use that key, that's fine. That's legit. But you have to you have to download it uh, from like a BitTorrent site or something. But then again, you might get you might get some viruses from there. But. Uh, if you wanted to do it fully legitimate, you would buy buy a copy of Windows, which I don't think is even that expensive. Windows 7. Um, 
And then what I do, I haven't really done it lately, um, is I take, once in a while, I'll take my entire hard drive, hard drive out of my laptop and image the hard drive to a big hard drive. So if I get some problem down the road, my hard drive fails, or I get a virus, I can just restore the whole thing. Because um, this stuff happens, right? Like, your hard drive will fail. It's not a question of if. It will fail eventually. I don't know. It could last 10 years. It could last a year. It's not, you know, engineering is not really an exact thing. That's why, do you have a backup? Um, like, do you have a backup uh, plan? Do you have, like, let's say if you do schoolwork, where do you, where do you, do you keep the files only on your laptop? Yeah. That's risky. Risky. What happens if it crashes? That's it. Yeah. You're gone. I have my, let's say I'm working on my PhD thesis. I have a local copy of my laptop. It's backed up to a, a server on campus here. I have a, another local copy of my computer at home. I have uh, a USB stick with it copied on there. I have, so basically, there has to be an apocalypse before I lose my data. But for you, you could just spill, spill a drink on your laptop. That's it. Bye bye. Right? And so, even like the best laptops, they will not, they, they have a limit, they have a life. Right? The, the best hard, because hard drives, especially the old kind, they have moving parts that wear out over time. So you need to back up your stuff. Be for this stuff exactly, for this reason yeah. exactly. You get a virus or something, or a crash, right? Okay. Second. Yeah. Um, I thought I had uh, signed up for computer but it's not letting me in. So. Into Blackboard? Into anything. Oh. <laughs> but you, you, you logged on to this computer. Uh, I, I did Google. I, I have the email, Ryan's email, but it's not letting me go to my Ryan's thing. I thought it was the same. Uh, it's just the front part of the email. Uh, it should be. Like, so just everything except the app. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like, including Ryan's email? No, no. Just that? This app it should be. Because mine is just C-Branch. Security guard might come around sometime and keep you up. Okay. 
Because that is the text, what you're telling it is that is the text inside. So what you need to do is you need to set the body. It's just like an empty tag. You know, this is an empty tag. See how you remember sometimes? Okay. So now what we would do is so this if tag is automatically going to take up the first screen. And now what we'll do is we'll set instead of the bottom. So now everything inside would be correct. So you were, you were, because you had this H, which was a box, and the box was tight around the words. So you were centering the words, but it was, you know what I mean? There was no difference.
Well, you could put everything in that. Or, but then everything is going to be stuck. If that's what you want, you can do that. But if you only want to center certain things, yeah, so just have it there. Uh, and so then you get rid of that, because that is overriding. If you want it to be full, that's it's it's more kind of if you want it to be small and then uh it's
side you're going to jump and close That's going to be 100. It's going to, it's, most things default to 100%. They try and fill up their parent. So if you put a paragraph in a body, 
it will try and fill up the whole body. Right? The body will try and fill up the whole thing. Right? Okay. So I think it's be so set the set the text align for li to be left. Thank you. 